Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to review the videos published in July 2018. Let's begin. So, in July we start by continuing the waiting queue in Battle Royale Tycoon. First by adding the ability to modify the waiting queue, which adds positions in a grid-based logic. Essentially, exactly like in Roller Coaster Tycoon, which was my goal. The other video, a few days later, completed the waiting queue by creating a specific class to handle the guest AI and cleaning up several issues that popped up. The waiting queue is a really cool system, and if you're working on a tycoon game yourself, I believe watching that series will help you out a lot. There were two completely beginner-focused videos, one on how to set up a 2D scene and another one on how to set up the UI. If you're completely new to Unity, these videos will help you get up and running fast. They start off with a completely empty scene and walk you through the whole process, which ends up with what I use in my own games. Then we continue creating our UI graph. First we added support for a dynamic Y axis, which automatically scales the graph based on the value amount. Then we added the ability to have a dynamic X axis to support an infinite number of values. Afterwards, we converted our line graph into a bar chart, which was relatively easy since we kept our code clean throughout the whole series. And finally, we created a visual interface to easily display our graph values in any way we want. Adding more display types is very easy given how we set up the code, and swapping the visual representation is also extremely simple. There were a couple of videos on the subject of a character portrait, it's a really cool effect that I've used a lot in my games. We created a UI window that displays a render texture which captures a view of the character. We also added support for multiple windows following different characters. And finally, we created a generic character class and used it to display some stats on our window. The quest arrow pointer is a great simple element that is useful for a great variety of games. Anytime you have a game where you want to direct the player to a position, you can use this code. In the following video, we added support for multiple arrows to be able to have multiple pointers pointing to multiple positions. And finally, we customized the colors and sprites, making the whole script very robust and adaptable. We began work on the Simple Resource Gatherer AI. This is also a series taking you through the making of a resource gatherer AI like you might see in something like Age of Empires. The goal is to make a unit that we can direct to gather a certain resource and keep track of that resource. The AI and resource manager will support multiple types and in the end we're going to construct a building using those resources. It started off very simple by creating a gather AI script with a simple state machine. The AI asks the game handler for a resource node that he then mines. After mining, he asks the game handler for a storage where he moves to and drops the resources. In the following video, we expand upon the AI and create a script to keep track of our resources. The resource storage class is very clean and simple in a way that does not depend on knowing any other classes. This is what we will later use to test if we have enough resources for case constructing a building. Unity Caller as a hexadecimal string was an interesting video. It contains the code to be able to use hexadecimal strings when setting callers in your code. For me, since I create my games mostly through code, this is extremely useful. Just open Photoshop and get the hexadecimal string, then paste it in the code and everything works great. There was a video on the time take system, which is a relatively simple system that I find super helpful in my games. It essentially fires an event after a certain amount of time. This makes it extremely simple to keep track of timed events without having timers on every single object. The example in the video was a tower being constructed. Instead of having a timer on each tower, it would simply keep track of how many ticks were left in construction. This system will help readability and performance, especially if you have a game with lots of units. So that was it for the month of July 2018. I hope you found the videos helpful and learned something along the way. If you have any questions regarding any of the videos, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.